Nyang. Welcome to Delightful. It's the twelfth day of Craftsmas, the final one. So what have I got for you on Christmas Eve? A doll, of course. Let's look at the concept art. Inspired by gingerbread houses and candy canes, I took a sweet-themed approach to making my very own Christmas elf. I designed her with the Generation 3 Draculara doll in mind, so that she's short and sweet. Plus, she's already got the ears. I came up with three color palettes, all of which I like for different reasons, but after giving it some thought, I combined my favorite elements into a fourth and final design. I love the drawing so much! I hope I can make the doll look just as good! Let's make the outfit first. I had to draw up a new pattern for this doll's unique body type. You're probably tired of hearing me say this, but as always, it took many iterations and lots of trial and error until I came up with this funky looking pattern for the bodysuit and puffy sleeves. It's not perfect, which is why I'm not offering it as a pattern on my Etsy shop. It's an unusual outfit anyway, I'm not sure who would actually want to recreate this. It seemed intimidating at first, but sewing a bodysuit simply combines your knowledge of how to sew pants and how to sew shirts into the same project. Before I knew it, I had the sleeves attached and was zipping up the side seams. I used the same fabric to make the collar and the hat. The hat fabric was glued and sewn to a cardboard cone. The collar has a snap in the back to keep it in place, and hooks together in the front with a hook and eye clasp. The bow is purely decorative. This already looks so cute! Now we get to decorate the outfit just like a gingerbread house! This part was so much fun! I painted chocolate sections with acrylics, and took the opportunity to paint the sleeves a darker brown while I was at it. The brown color I bought wasn't as dark as my artwork and that bothered me. It will make the sleeves a little stiff, but worth it, I think. Next, I got out the hot glue gun and dispensed lots of little gumdrop buttons onto a plastic sheet. I made more than I need so that we can choose the best ones. I had leftover brown hot glue in the gun if you're wondering about the color. After two layers of white gesso primer, I paint all the gumdrops that came out the right size. Glaze them with an extra glossy varnish, then pop them off the sheet. Easier said than done. Maybe the plastic sheet wasn't a great idea. <laughs> hmm, they're shiny and brown on the inside. They feel more like M&Ms than gumdrops. Oh well. I glue the candies around the collar. Then add icing with puffy paint. Here's a tip. Draw several designs on a scrap piece of fabric first to warm up and get the hang of it. Then move to your actual project with the puffy paint. And of course, be careful where you hold the object, and set each piece in an undisturbed area away from activity. You don't want anyone touching the puffy paint until it's nice and dry. I add icing swirls around the cuffs of her sleeves, and on her hat. To match the multicolored candies on her collar, I hot glue colorful pom-poms around the brim of her hat. I made her candy cane baton and star decoration out of air dry clay, painted them with acrylics, and added various bows and ribbons. That's most of the outfit done! For shoes, I was hoping to use the original doll's footwear as a base, but alas, the leggings have made the feet too big. We'll have to make our own pair of shoes from scratch using papier mache! Wrap the doll's feet in a protective layer of cling wrap. Then, dip super thin strips of newspaper into your flour mixture and start wrapping! Good old paper mache! It was fun in elementary school, and it's still fun as an adult! Once I've wrapped the foot in two or three layers, I bunch up some newspaper and add bulk to the toes and heels, doing my best to sculpt the shape of an elf shoe. Leave the shoes to dry overnight, and when you come back the next day, you can cut them off the doll. This is by far the scariest part. You don't want to cut the doll's clothes underneath, so take it slow and whittle down layers at a time. Once they're finally off the doll's feet, you can breathe a sigh of relief and continue shaping the shoes. 
I tidied up the mouth of the shoe and even tore out an inner layer so that they'd be roomier on the inside. Add a layer of white gesso primer and then add paint. I'll be the first to admit they look, um, kinda lumpy. I guess I need to work on my paper mache technique. Even so, thanks to a cute paint job, they end up looking quite charming. They have that clunky wooden shoe aesthetic that's quite appropriate for Christmas. Insert some pom-poms to the pointed tips, and they're done! Let's set the clothes aside for now and turn to the head. This is one of the dolls I had to repair after breaking a neck peg, which is why she's got this staple on the top of her head. But it shouldn't get in the way of the reroute. I paint the head white, then seal it with matte varnish. I'll be using Snowflake and Watermelon Martini from DollyHair.com. I order the big 18 inch hanks because I know I'll use it up eventually, but for this doll's short hairstyle, we can cut the hair shorter to begin with and get more bang for our buck. It wastes less, too. Let's get started! With your rooting tool at the ready, pinch off a plug's worth of strands, slip it into the eye of the needle, and stab it into the head at a clean 90 degree angle. Pretty easy, right? That's all there is to it. Now just do that a hundred more times. To make this rooting process easier for myself, I did the whole doll's head in solid white hair first, then came back and punched up the part and bangs with peppermint red. Pour glue into the head to seal the hair on the inside. Fabric glue works best. I leave this overnight to dry. I'll style the hair after the face up, so we need to tuck it out of the way for now. It's worth twist tying off the bangs in different sections so that you can find your way back to the part later. Wrap the hair up into a hair burrito and pin the fabric in place around the hairline to create an accurate mask. Spray the doll with Mr. Super Clear sealant to prep the plastic. This stuff works like magic to create a finely textured surface over the vinyl face, which allows pencils and pigments to find purchase. You'll have a hard time drawing on plastic otherwise. If you're ever curious about the materials I use, a list can always be found in the description box of this video. Let's get started! Using pastel, I dust on eyeshadow and lipstick. Then use the same color to shade the ears, blush the nose, and even draw the eyebrows. I got a lot of mileage out of pastels this time. Next I draw her wide, friendly eyes with a red pencil. I love all the Monster High dolls I've ever worked on, but it must be said that the latest Generation 3 dolls have face shapes that really suit my style. I'm a fan of bigger eyes and ears and smiley expressions. They're just so cute! I sketch in her irises next. I didn't film the breaks, but every so often I stop and give the face a fresh layer of Mr. Super Clear sealant so that the color continues to build. I've been drawing teeth on all my dolls lately. I must be going through a phase. <laughs> I add some depth to the shading by introducing variations of color, hot pink, maroon, and finally black to make the eyelashes pop. I always have trouble building up the whites of the eyes, so I think I'll wet my pencils and use a brush to speed things along. For the fine, hair-thin details like her lower lashes, I switch to gouache paints. I drew on highlights and accents around her top set of lashes, and also used the paints to add more color to the eyes. It took two layers to build up the white. I use acrylics to dot on the tiny gumdrop details, and paint a small circle for the catch light this time, like she's looking into a ring light. <laughs> Finally, I add all the color to the gumdrops. I love how this character ends up with a slight jester quality to her. Release the burrito. And now we can style that beautiful peppermint hair.
Separate the bangs, find the part, and pour a first pass of boiling water over the hair to lay it down flat. That's more manageable. To achieve a cute bouncy bob, I'll be using jumbo straws and bobby pins. Divide the hair into sections and pinch the hair into a curl by using three straws like this. Douse the hair a second time, making sure the hot water touches all the curls. Set her aside to air dry overnight. Remove the curlers and trim the hair. That means cutting the bangs too. Always the scariest part for me. <laughs> Why are bangs so hard? With some fine tuning using a hot chopstick, I was able to get the curls to more or less behave. Anyone who's worked on dolls before can tell you that short hairstyles are generally more difficult than long ones. So it speaks well for the hair that I'm able to control it this well. For the final touch, I add some quirky candy cane shaped hair to her temples, which has been shaped and hardened by glue. That's everything! Let's assemble our sugary sweet Christmas elf. I keep the hat in place with a pin and use a small rubber band across the cane so that she can hold her baton. This is Polly Peppermint, and she's so excited to meet you! She captures the childlike excitement and joy of Christmas morning, and her color palette and jester-like influences give her an old-fashioned quality. There's also a touch of Elf on the Shelf in her DNA, because I imagine she pops up around the house in different locations. I love Polly so much, and I hope you do too! Don't go just yet, I've got one last gift for you! Use promo code DELIGHTFUL to get 10% off your order at dollyhair.com! They've recently revamped the website, it looks great, I've always loved their hair selection from the moment I began customizing many years ago, so if you need some new colors or are considering rooting a doll for the first time, head on over and claim your discount! Consider this an early Christmas present from myself and dollyhair.com. They didn't sponsor me, we just agreed to do this, and there's even a little section on the website where you can read an interview I did, so that's fun too. This holiday season has been so merry and bright for my family. I hope yours has been just as magical. If you checked in for all 12 days of Craftsmas, thank you so much for watching. Making this extravagant Christmas special was a lot of fun this year. Now, jump in bed and cover up your head because Santa Claus comes tonight! Merry Christmas and stay artsy! Annyeong! <laughs>